Let's go to the King Arthur, the King Arthur legends. Ah, I love, I love the King Arthur stories because, yes, they are tales of, you know, dashing knights and gorgeous ladies and self-rescuing princesses and, you know, sweet, gentle harpers, anything. That has nothing to do with today, but fundamentally, they're stories about us, you know, us, us people who try to make the world a better place, even in the face of sometimes overwhelming odds. And it's about trying to find hope in tough times. You know? And that's 21st century, as far as I can tell. There is so much beauty in the world, and there are so many people trying to snuff it out. And it's up to all of us to just keep on shining as much as we can to make sure that the world remembers that laughter and courage and honesty and loyalty are still here and still in abundance. So. I like it. So this is the tale of a pagan wild child named Gawain. He was a prince of the Orkney Isles, the farthest, wildest, most pagan reaches of Arthur's realm. And he was known as the boldest, brashest, quickest to answer any sort of fight in all of the round table. And so when the green man himself, divinity of nature, shows up in the form of a green-clad knight, he shows up in Camelot and starts to insult King Arthur's dream. Green Man Smash. Green Man Smash. Yeah, exactly. The Green Man does not approve. Gawain steps up and offers to defend Arthur's honor in a duel to the death with the Green Man himself. Now that takes some serious... Huh? So Gawain chases the Green Man around the countryside for a year learns a lot about what it means to be tempted, what it means to be put to trial, and for the rest of his life he wears a green belt or a green sash to remind himself of the lessons he learned on his way to fight the Green Knight.
mind's not swayed for another lady holds his oath she offers body offers land but each advance is spurned so she keeps it melt into his hand a gift of magic earned by constancy in face of all temptation to his given word Thank you.